Okay, guys, well, welcome to today's webinar, a one hour webinar on 10 powerful ways to drive traffic to your website. Now, this workshop is part of the Australian Federal Government's Digital Solutions Program and is brought to you in Western Australia, Northern Territory and Queensland by Business Station, Treaty Business Consulting and RDA Brisbane. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Kerry Saverin and I'm the co-founder of Altitude Business Solutions. I've got over 20 years business management experience. In fact, I think I'm up to about 25 now. I might need to adjust that. Um, and I'm the current president of the Beanley Yatley Chamber of Commerce. So that's just a little bit about me uh, so that you know who I am if you haven't seen me before. Now, I was just talking about um, website etiquette and today you'll find that your microphones are muted and that's just for better sound quality of the recording. Um, this is an interactive webinar, however, so if you have any questions, I would like you to pop them into the chat for me. And everybody who is registered, whether they're here today or not, will receive a copy of the recording. I do suggest you have a note pen and, and paper handy. You might be something that you want to write down throughout the session. I'm a big one for taking notes. I tend to find if I write something down, it actually sinks in. So I do often recommend that, uh, that people have a notepad and pen next to them ready to go. So excuse my voice, it is a little bit husky today. I have been away for the weekend, had a fantastic time, but did a lot of talking. So it's a little bit husky. So you're in the right place today if you're ready to increase your website traffic and increase your SEO search ranking as well, because obviously the two work hand in hand. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, if you already have a website, you probably had great ambitions. You know, you had visions of thousands of people visiting your site on a weekly basis. And you may have even dreamed of writing weekly blogs that were shared by hundreds of people um, and possibly even having the occasional article that goes viral. But the truth of the matter is that while you may have had these dreams of having a fantastic website, it's not as easy as you had envisioned to get people to your website. So maybe you get 100 people per week to your website, or maybe you're lucky to get 100 people per year. And can I tell you, as there's more and more websites that come onto the web, it's a lot harder to get people there. So you need to have a proven strategy to get more web traffic. You need to be using tested methods for generating a steady stream of website visitors. And you need to know some tactics and hacks for getting people to visit your site and engage with your content a little bit more. In this webinar today, we're going to be discussing 10 strategies for getting more people to your website. And each of these strategies, if used on their own, can drive traffic, yes, but when combined together, can really make for a, a traffic machine going to your website. So rather than, um, you know, trying to put 5% into 10 of these strategies, what I want you to do is I want you to start with one strategy and I want you to really master and perfect that strategy before you move on to the next one. Because if you can do that, when you move on to one of the other strategies, you then have two very successful strategies on your website rather than just one. So it's important to avoid, you know, as I said, jumping from one to the other, doing 5% of this one and 5% of that one. So pick ones that you like and go for it. And not all of these you'll feel comfortable with, and I completely understand that. And that is why I'm saying, you know, start with the ones that you feel most comfortable with and get those done and then move forward from there. And they're just ideas as well. So the first one we're going to start out with today is I'm going to talk to you a little bit about website optimization. Now, when it comes to um, website optimization, I like to start out by thinking about the customer. Now, you know, you've probably never really thought about it before. Um, but if you think about after all of these years of us using websites as consumers, so think of yourself as a customer, we're actually, we actually have website expectations now. You know, there are certain things when we go to a website that we really expect to see. So granted, the structure of websites have changed a lot over the last few years, particularly since 2007, you know, with the introduction of everybody having smartphones in their pocket. And we'll, we will discuss that a little bit later as well. But there are certain things that, the certain, you know, pieces of content that we expect to, to see. So, for example, if you go to a website for a company, you want to know 
Um, how do you help? How does that website help you? You know, who are they? What offers or services do they have? Are there any, te any testimonials or reviews on there? You know, how do you contact them? And what are some frequently asked questions? Now, all of those things are really important pieces of information that you need to have on your website. And as I said, are a bit of an expectation as to what people expect to see. Now, as I was saying, with the introduction of mobile phones and tablets, websites have changed over the years. And I'm going to explain to you exactly what's happened or how it's evolved. So I'm going to firstly talk about multiple pages. Remember back in the day when we only used to access websites on a desktop or a laptop computer? And we loved multiple pages, okay? So you had a home page, you had an about page, you had a services page, you had a contact page. The more pages you had, the better web, your, web, your website was um, because we loved those pages. But today we're accessing websites more than likely on a device that nearly fits into our hand. And we want the information that we want in as little clicks or fiddling around on that device as possible. So ideally, the main content of your business needs to be on your home page so that as a consumer, I can scroll through and I can really get a good overview of what your company does. So I don't want to have to find, you know, when you're on a mobile phone, you've got to find those three little lines in the top right or left hand corner to possibly go to another page. I'm really not interested in going to those lines. I want to see, I want to scroll through. I want to see everything that I need to find out about you on that page. So once I have an idea that, yes, you're the company that can help me with the problem that I have, then I'm going to go to your menu of other pages. But if I can't get an idea from that front page that I'm where I need to be or that the information I need is here or that you're the business that I want to purchase from if I have to go to another page forget it I'm going to go to another website it's unfortunately the way that we have been programmed over the last sort of you know 10 to 14 years speed plays a big part when it comes to your website also so with the introduction of mobile phones, having everything at our fingertips at a moment notice, we've become increasingly, increasingly impatient. And we want things fast, we want them now. And if your site takes too long to load, then we're out of there. We're onto another site already. And your website can be running slow for a few reasons. It can be because you have images that are taking too long to load. Or maybe you've decided to do a really great thing and we did this on our website. It was a mistake that we made. We had a fantastic welcome video. But rather than having it hosted on YouTube with a link to it on our website, we actually had it hosted on our website. So our, our website was very slow to load because there were all these videos that were being loaded onto our website. So videos can really slow your website down as well. So you want to make sure that your potential customers can get all the information that they need as quickly as they possibly can. So when it comes to building websites now, some of the most successful businesses have websites that are only one page. All the information is on that one page. Everything that the client needs to know or the customer needs to know is on that web page. Or maybe everything they need to know is on that one page and then they just have to click into the shop to actually buy the products or to book the services. But we're making it as easy as we possibly can for our customers to purchase from us through our website. So we want to make it very clear. Does anyone have any questions on that before I move on to the next point? Does anyone have any questions on, please pop them into the chat because I'd love to answer them as we're going through um, because you know, no, no questions is, um, is silly. So don't, don't be afraid to ask. One page websites, you know, this is great for anybody who's on here today who doesn't have a website. And maybe you don't have a website because you've been procrastinating because it seems like a lot of hard work. When we build websites for our clients, we start off with one page that gets them up on the web. And then we talk about what we're going to add. And in some cases with some clients, we add a gallery page or, you know, something along those lines. 
So Susan's asking the question, if you have separate pages, do you put the same info in the home in the home and on those separate pages. So the way I see it, Susan, is if you've got the bulk of your information on that home page, then you don't need to have those separate pages. For an example would be um, on our website, we have our frequently asked questions on our home page. We don't have a separate page that's a frequently asked questions page. We've just popped the frequently asked questions on the bottom of our home page for people to go to. Um, testimonials, we've put testimonials on our website so that people don't go to a separate page to read those testimonials. It's not necessarily about having a whole page with lots of information on it. It's about giving them little snippets. So we give them little snippets. How we advertise our products or what we do is we say, look, you know, what are you here for today? What problems are you having? And we put down the three problems that they might be having. And from there, when they click on those particular problems, it takes them to another page which says, you know, if you're having troubles with your website, then here's how we might be able to help you. There's no need to double up on information, no. And we're actually at the stage where when it comes to information, us as humans have a little bit of information overload. So less is more. Being straight to the point uh, and I say this to real estate agents all the time in their advertising of houses, being straight to the point and tell me what are the features and benefits of that home that I'm looking to buy. Don't give me all the blah, blah. You know, give me the features and benefits of working with you or of doing business with you. Um, solve my problems. So I do embed videos on our website through YouTube. So we do have um, a couple. Embed basically is a term where you can load a video onto YouTube and you can make it appear on your website um, without having to go to YouTube. So it plays on your website. So you, your clients don't have to leave your website um, in order to watch that video. It's actually what's called embedded on there. It, it, it loads the same amount of time as what it does on YouTube. So it's very, very responsive and it doesn't slow your website down. So Susan, you and I might need to have a private chat about this. Um, send me an email and um, I can explain it in more detail for you. But it does make everything a lot quicker um, for it to load. So number two, I want to get this out of the way now um, because I know a lot of you will be thinking about this when it comes to website optimization. Um, but creating amazing shareworthy content is hands down the best way to get traffic to your website. You know, writing blogs is often discussed, um, you know, when people are considering their website, but it's often something that people procrastinate about or leave to an end also. Um, in fact, what I'll do is um, with this uh, webinar, I'll, I'll send through a link to some information that could be of, of help to you when it comes to blog writing. Um, there'll be some of you here today that aren't interested in blog writing at all, and that's okay. Well, it's kind of okay. Um, I think it's a waste to have a website that just sells and doesn't give any type of information to your clients. So if you've ever had the opportunity to read Gary Vanderchuk's book, Jab, 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 Hook, uh, and if you haven't, I suggest it's a book that you need to read. He talks about the concept of giving and giving to somebody until they actually buy from you. And it's been proven that if you give and you follow up and you give and you follow up and you give and you follow up, that you will get the business. And that's pretty much what his book is about. So for me, writing blog articles or having blog articles that I can send to people is my way of being able to give. But not everybody is a writer. And essentially, if you look behind, if you look back at our original blogs that we wrote, they're terrible. If you go back to our very first blog, it's terrible. But we just started out, you know, it was two and a half years ago and we wanted to get in the practice of writing blogs, whether they were good or not. The great thing about blogs is pretty much they stay there forever, but you can go back and edit them. So we're in the process now of going all the way back to our original first blog that we wrote and going, okay, now that we know what we know, what do we need to do to make this better? The other thing that you can do also is you can outsource your blogs. So you could get a content writer to write your blogs for you. Now, a lot of people ask, well, how much does this cost? You can normally find an Australian based content writer who will write a blog for you for about three or $400. And keeping in mind that that 
content writer will normally do some keyword research and make sure it's really rich and, and you know, drawing people into your website. The good idea is, uh, the great idea is that you can normally give a content writer a whole heap of points and say, I want to write an article on this. Here are all the points that I want covered and they'll turn it into an article. And of course, it might go backwards and forwards a couple of times. You're the expert in the field. They're just great at writing. So, you know, they want to get the information from you and they want to get it perfect. So you'll go backwards and forwards a couple of times until you get it right, but it can actually be outsourced. So someone's asking here, what's the difference between a blog and a landing page with that same content, which is better? Okay, so a blog is more like an article or, you know, you go to Google and you type in, you know, how do I tie shoelaces the best way? And an article will come up and that type of article is probably going to have a video attached to it because I'm going to want to see it. Um, and that's sort of giving me of information. Um, a landing page, when we talk about it, when I think of a landing page for myself, a landing page is more like a, a bit of a sales page. So the landing page of your website would normally be your home your home page. Okay, so altitudebusinesssolutions.com.au, you land on our home page. So it's a bit of a sales page. It's saying, this is what we do. This is who we are. Here's some frequently asked questions. Click here if you want to buy from us. Here's some testimonials. Here's our contact information. So it's a bit salesy. Where a blog is normally, guys, you're having a problem with tying your shoelaces. Here's how you can fix it. So it's the giving of information more so than, you know, trying to sell to somebody. And your homepage should be answering all the questions that anybody might have, like, how do I get to your services to find out how much they are? You know, this is where the frequently asked questions comes in really handy on your homepage. But there is a difference between the two. A lot of people use landing pages as sales pages, um, particularly if they're doing some online digital marketing. Now, I can hear some of you saying, Look, why are blogs so important? Well, the information and words that you have on your website give you a bigger chance of you coming up in Google search results. And ultimately that is what's gonna get you the most amount of traffic to your website. So as I was talking about, when somebody is searching for shoelaces, they end up on the right thing about shoelaces. A lot of people say, they get to this point, they go, okay, well, I'm gonna write a blog, that's great. What do I write about? And they spend hours sitting down and thinking about what they're gonna write and how they're gonna write it. But it really is simple. Your business only exists because of the problems that your customers have. So any blog writing that you do needs to be centered around what problems are your customers having? Now, you would know, you've already thought about this. So it should be, you're thinking about, um, so if you're thinking about starting a business, you go, I see a gap in the market because everybody's having this problem and there's no one to really solve it. So I'm there to solve that problem. So all of your articles should be centered around those problems. And you can find you get one problem and then from that one problem, you go, actually, there's another problem. You can normally find based off that one first initial problem, there is another problem as well. So you need to... If you're really considering getting into blogs, I can see a few questions coming here in relation to blogs. When in relation to how long a blog should be, anywhere from 300 to 2,000 words for me. Um, but we do run a, a, another whole webinar on blog writing. It's called Supercharge Your Blogging. So if you've got access to the free webinars through the Digital Solutions Program, um, have a look into the future um, and see what's coming up because I'm sure you'll find there's a Supercharge Your Blogging a webinar which runs through every single step and gives you all the tools to be able to uh, to blog successfully as well. But blogging is a really important part. It's probably the the biggest way people get to our website is through the blogs that we've written. And as I said to you, even those ones in the very beginning, sometimes I go back and go, "This is written terribly," or you know, the setup, the layout is not great. Um, but from what we've been able to establish now, and we, we now have a formula, which is so much better, which you'll see a little bit further down the track. Um, but it, it certainly is still getting traffic to the website. So it's amazing. 
Now, the reason why blogging works so well uh, as a traffic source is because once the information is published and it's out there, it's out there forever. You know, when, when an, uh, an article is published uh, on the internet, it stays there as a piece of content forever. So, you know, as we've gone ahead and we've done more blogging and we started out blogging once a month and then we moved to once a fortnight and then we went back to once a month, we just sort of go along. We haven't been real consistent and that's not necessarily the best, but it was about learning for us. It was about what works, what doesn't work. That's why we did it. As I said to you, we're going back to our old blogs and we're rewriting them. So that's a big process for us now. The third thing I want to touch on is using your content elsewhere. This is going to save you a lot of time. Now, yes, when we're talking about getting people to your website, getting people to your website and having a little bit of a marketing plan go hand in hand. But I just want you to see that how far one piece of content can go. So social media is key when it comes to generating traffic to your website also. Um, but you don't want to get sucked into the world of marketing and never actually coming out to do the things that you were meant to do. And people often ask us, you know, how we get all the content that we get for our social medias. And it just, it literally comes down to having a plan. And I'm just going to show you originally what our plan looked like. So the plan was we were going to run a blog on our website and we were going to put it on Facebook and we were going to email it out to our clients. Okay, so that is how we started out. So we'd write a blog, we'd share that blog onto our Facebook page for all of our followers there and we'd send an email out to our database and they would get a copy of that blog or part of the blog. So when we send the email out, we would only put the first paragraph of the blog and then we would say read more and that would get them to our website. And then on Facebook, we'd say, if you'd like to know more about this, head to our website. So we were trying to drive traffic to our website. But in the last two and a half years, we've realized a few things. We've realized that the more content that is out there on more platforms, the more people are going to come to our website. So, and it just means we're getting that consistent traffic. And it also means when I think about putting content on all the other pieces um, all the other social media platforms it gets a little bit overwhelming doesn't it you're like oh my god now I have to have something to put on Facebook and I have something to put on Instagram and you know I've got to have something to put on LinkedIn and but essentially what I want you to think of is that it's the same same but different content and I'll show you the next image here to explain it because this is what our blog strategy looks like now so we write one blog and that one blog always has three key points. So whatever the topic is, there's always three key points. And then we have three, those three key points are shared out at different times across our different social media platforms. So those three points are shared out at different times over Instagram, at different times over Facebook, over TikTok, LinkedIn, email, and YouTube. So all of a sudden, this one little blog that we've written is giving us all of this content to put across our social media platforms. And all of that is driving people back to our website. So you can see how this is really creating a bit of a traffic machine. But can I tell you, we haven't had to write all of these different pieces of content because the blog, the blog that covers three points is giving us three pieces of content which we can then share out at different times across all of these different social media platforms. Is it okay for me to share a piece of con content, let's say on YouTube today, from a blog that was written a year ago? Absolutely it is. I do not recommend that you write your blog and you share on the same day at the same time, and this is what happens, the exact same content across Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, LinkedIn, email, and YouTube. It's just a waste because at that particular point in time, your potential client may not have that as a problem on every single platform. And the thing is, is people get a little bit tired of going, oh, here we go. They've just pasted the same picture. I just saw that picture on Facebook and now I'm on Instagram and I've just seen the same thing here. 
what I'm saying is create the content. The, the content is the same. The picture is the same. Absolutely. But I don't want you to share it all on the same day in the same month at the same time. Have a bit of a schedule. So go, well, I'm going to share tip number one on Instagram today. Um, I'm going to share it on LinkedIn next Monday. And I'm going to share it on, you know, email next week. It'll go out by email. Share it at different times. How do we set up the blog time schedules for our company? So I don't really have a rule um, around that. I literally just, I have a content plan, um, a social media plan. So, um, but the whole idea is that I don't want to, when I sit down and I write a blog, I know that I need to have the content to go across these social media platforms. And then based on that, I'll look at my social media content and decide where I'm going to post that. So the two are probably a little bit different things, but what I wanted to show you is that I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, so 18 different pieces of content that are all going at at different times and constantly driving someone back to my website. Um, and it's that this where it becomes a bit of a a bit of a um, traffic machine. It just you know you've got different people coming at different times coming to your website on different subjects. So doesn't mean that your email subscribers all at the same time with content three times. No. So the three different pieces of content that I'm emailing them are three totally different points. Yes, they're leading back to the same blog. And yes, there are people who are subscribed on our email list who go back and read all of our blogs. I understand that. But normally the three different points are three sort of different problems. So what resonates with one person might not resonate with another. So that means they open up the first email and they go, yeah, that doesn't really interest me. But when she starts talking about the second email, oh, that kind of interests me. Like that, that point interests me. So we're trying to get them to be interested. And that's why you have the three different points because something that resonates with me may not resonate with you or something that resonates with you may not resonate with me. Do I pay someone? Outsource the benefits and negatives. I have never paid somebody before. I'm just about to pay somebody. I have sought somebody that I'm really impressed with and um, I'm ready to take the dive to get somebody to write an article for me. So I'm just testing that out, um, Chris. So uh, yeah, maybe ask me in another couple of months and I'll have a definite answer for that. The benefits would definitely be time um, and also structure. And also, if you're like me, I'm not great with grammar. So you read some of our, our blogs and you'll probably go, she's forgotten a full stop and a comma. And I know that that annoys some people. So um, I'm looking at saving some time by outsourcing the writing of them. Um, so I don't share the whole, um, I don't ever share the whole blog in an email. The, the only thing that goes out via an email is normally a paragraph or something that says, you know, are you having a problem with X um, to try and get them there? So, um, so uh, there you go. Sandy says, um, you do get someone to write your blogs for you and you provide the outline for the person to write. Excellent. It's a very easy process. I understand that. Um, when it comes to uh, blog writing, Chris, I only try and write a blog once a month. It's about long, getting longevity out of that blog across all the other platforms as well. So you can see if you're writing a blog, and then you're going, okay, as part of my blog routine, I know I need to have three points in that blog because that's going to make it really easy for me. And then I'm going to create, um, I normally create three different images that I can share across all the different platforms. I don't create 18 different images. I normally create three different images and I share those across the different platforms. Because don't forget, I might be sharing one this month and one next month. So you've got to spread them out a little bit. Wouldn't it be great if you could sit down and go, right, well, I've just got 18 different pieces of content that I can share out over the next six months. You know, it just makes life so much easier. So it's always a daily habit for me to be thinking about content. I actually have a little note um, set up in my phone. You know, most phones have the little note, note app that you can go to. Every time I think of an idea, I just quickly type it down in there. So... 
Um, the bold conclusion always goes at the end um, of your blog, Susan. And again, um, I highly recommend the supercharge your blogging if you want to know the exact formula. Um, we give you all the tools so you can walk away with the exact format of what your blog should look like also. Um, when I share on YouTube, do I share three videos, one per point? Yes, that's correct. And each video can be as long as you feel comfortable. So all of our videos at the moment that we have are actually private videos because I've been too scared to even um, put myself out there into the big world <laughs> on a personal level. Um, but that's something that we are moving into in the next month. We just started on TikTok and we found that that's working very successfully. So I need to just put myself out there. Um, so oh, Sandy's saying I set myself a goal of at least one or two blogs done a week. Wow, okay, that's great. I get my developer um, to upload it to my website and marketing person to distribute the content and social media channels. Um, don't forget, Sandy, that a blog it actually has a really long um, longevity. So um, one to two blogs per week, you could probably cut that down if you wanted to. If you find that finding that's a little bit too much time consuming, um, you know, are you getting 18 pieces of content that you can share across other platforms um, with that? Uh, with that as well. So that's just something for you to consider. Um, blogs do help you become an expert in a particular topic, absolutely. It has benefited our business, though I will say if you look at our first lot of blogs, we were simply all over the place. We were writing articles about anything and everything. And I think you do need to have a bit of a strategy. Um, again, come to the Supercharge Your Blogging uh, website um, to, you know, what I've learned through the process, come along to the Supercharger your, your, um, blogging uh, webinar to find out all the details on blogging. But what we've learned over the last two and a half years um, is let's work smarter and not harder. Because what we were doing is we were writing blogs and then we were going making content and we were like, hang on a second. We're just creating more stuff instead of going, okay, well, let's write one blog. Let's have three points about it. Let's get 18 bits of um, information that we can share across all the different channels. And then from there, once we've exhausted that, then we go on and writing our next blog. So it, you're just sort of tying everything in so it makes it nice and easy. And as I said, working smarter and not harder. I often find particularly when you start in business that you either have time or money. Um, so time to learn how to do things yourself. Um, or you don't have the time, but you have the money to pay somebody to do it. So if you're in a position where you have the money to pay somebody to do it, pay somebody to do those blogs for you, just make sure you're getting the most amount of bang for your buck and, and sharing that across multiple different platforms in different ways. And that will drive, you know, you'll have this real machine going. And what's interesting is even on some of those early blogs that we wrote, which are terrible when you go back and read them, um, we're still getting traffic to some of those more popular blogs. Uh, you can update blogs, absolutely. Uh, we are going back. I've just had a direct message come through. Can you update them? You can. Um, do I recommend changing the date? I, I don't always change the actual date of the blog, no. I do put a little note sometimes at the bottom of the blog saying updated on this date um, so that when somebody goes to it or the first line of the blog to say updated on this date. Um, because then the person knows who's reading it, that it's been updated. Um, but it will also meet you in becoming a, um, an expert. Uh, strategy number four, I'm going to talk about blog commenting. So we just spoke about writing blogs. Now we're going to talk about blog commenting. So um, have you ever, let's say you've had a problem and you've gone to Google and you've typed in that problem because that's what we all do these days. And you've come, these articles come up and you've read this article and you've gone, wow, that was a really good article. It really answered all of my questions for me. Have you ever scrolled to the bottom and actually written a comment to, on it and said, you know, this was a great article. Thanks so much for your help. Like, have you ever done anything like that? A lot of people, 90% of people who read blogs say, no, actually, I never thought about writing a comment. Um, when you do this um, via a, a website, a lot of the time it asks you for your website details. So if you read a really good blog and you scroll to the bottom and you say, yes, I want to put a comment, um, it will ask you what your name is or what name that you want to be shown and you can choose anything. And then it will often ask you what your website is. 
And what we found is by going through and going, thanks so much for sharing. This was a great article, really in depth. Keeping in mind that some blog readers will scroll straight to the bottom to read the comments of what others are saying before they even waste their time of reading it. So it's like a little bit of a testimonial for that blog. But what we've also found is when we went and commented on somebody else's blog post and we'd put our website in, then the person would come to our website and they would find a blog that they were interested in and they would comment on it. Now, what does the comments do on your blog post? Well, it tells Google when people are writing good comments about it, it tells Google that this was a great article, that this is information that it should be showing people. And the more comments that you have, the more likely your blog post is to be on page number one when someone searches for um, a particular problem that they have. So it builds relationships with other people. Absolutely, it does. Um, and you can have partnerships with people. And I will be touching on that, Chris, just in a little minute. You're going to see that very shortly. Um, but blog commenting, and the great thing about blog commenting is that I can actually comment as my business. So when it comes up name, I always type in Altitude Business Solutions. And then it says website. And, and so the blog comment will actually come up saying, Altitude Business Solutions says, this was a great article, gave us lots of information to work with, really appreciate you taking the time to write it. Some people will then go, who's Altitude Business Solutions? Let's check them out. They sound reputable and they end up on our website. So it's all of these little things that you do. And I'm not saying that we sit down and go, right, let's go and comment on 100 blogs. It's not a strategy. I'm going to talk about a strategy in relation to it very shortly. But if we're looking for something on, on the internet and we come across um, a really good article, we're not afraid to say, hey, this is a really good article. Um, and leave our little message. And we know that that helps as well. So um, how does this help? As I said, how does it help with getting traffic to your website? Well, Google sees your comments and the more comments you have, the more Google feels that this is a, a reputable article. Y you know, it's people trust it. They're writing comments on it. So the more you blogs that you have, the more chances that you have that your website will be found on Google. The more comments you have, the more likely that that article is to appear on page one. So Google can see that people are happy with that article, that they're getting the information that they need. Now, number five, we've already spoken about this a little bit, you know, two, two ideas ago, but number five, I wanna to talk to you about sharing your content across social media. Now, for the sake of this example, I'm just going to use Facebook. I'm just going to stick to, to one um, platform just to keep it a little bit simple for you today. So you've written your three-point blog and you share um, point number one on your Facebook business page. Okay, so point number one, let's say that the article is about, you know, how to iron shirts properly. So point number one might be that you use starch. Do they even make starch anymore? It was something my mum used to use when I was a kid. <laughs> used to spray it on your clothes and then you, you'd iron. You can tell I don't iron. I don't know why I picked this subject. This is what happens with live webinars, people. So uh, the first point might be that, do you spray your clothes with starch before you iron them? And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a great idea to spray your shirts with starch before you iron them. Um, to find out more information on how to iron a shirt, head to our website and that's going to lead them to the whole entire article. The whole article is going to have three points. The first point being starch, spraying your clothes with starch. The second one being using a hot iron. And the third one being having a routine to how you're ironing your shirts. So see how you've got your three different points there, creating three different pieces of article. So Maybe spraying my clothes with starch hasn't got your attention. But, you know, having a, a process for how I iron my clothes, maybe that's the thing that gets you. So there need to be three different pieces, um, the three different pieces of content, but the three points need to be a little bit different. So going back to the one point. So we've got, oh, of course, it's okay to have four points. If you want to have four, Angela, you go for it. Have as many as you like. The more you have, obviously, the more pieces of content you have. You don't have to continually reinvent the wheel. When you write one blog, you've got all these pieces of content you can use. So you've shared point number one on your Facebook business page. 
with a little bit of information and a link to the full article for them to read more. Now it doesn't have to end there. So you could then from there share that exact same post into some groups on Facebook. You could share that exact same post across to your personal account. You know, your friends and family, they want to support you too. They're more than likely going to go to your website. They're going to like the article. They might even like that post. They want to help and support you. Or you could send that post as a message to somebody or particular clients that you've been dealing with if you're big on using social media for that. So we do this, for example, if somebody has contacted us through social media, sent us a message and said something like, uh, how much are your social media services? And we've replied with the information. We've never actually secured the business. So, you know, we've spoken to them. We've never actually secured the business and they're just sort of sitting there still. So if we write a blog article about social media, we will send them a message and say, hey, you inquired a little while ago about our social media services. Here's an article that you might find really helpful. If you're still looking for someone to help you out with your social media marketing, please come back with us. In the meantime, enjoy this complimentary information. And it's amazing how many people go, oh, actually, I'd totally forgotten that I wanted to do that. And it just sort of you're giving to them, but you're reminding them that you're still here also. So you can see how that one piece of content, even just on one platform, platform can be shared three different, three different ways. Because I'm going to share that post into my groups. I'm going to put it across to my personal account. And I'm going to send it in a couple of messages to some clients as well. So all of this is helping to build your customer relationships. Someone touched on it earlier, Chris, I'm not sure if it was you saying that, you know, building relationships really is key to getting the business. How great is it if you were to meet somebody and they were to say, you know, what do you do? And you were to say, well, I iron shirts. And they go and go, oh my God, I struggle ironing my shirts. I just, you know, I just have so much drama with it. And you were to go, do you know what? I'm going to send you, can I grab your email address? I'm just going to send you some information. I wrote a blog about it, which might help you out. You're not saying, well, I should iron your shirts for you. You see the difference there? And then maybe when you send them the article and they read it and they go, oh gosh, I've got to have starch. I've got to do this, I've got to do that. Maybe I should ask her how much her services are. Maybe I should look at getting her to iron my shirts for me. But not only that, from there, when you send an email going, here's the information, imagine what it'd be like sending an, an email two weeks later saying, hey guys, how did you go with your shirt ironing? Did that article really help you out? So building relationships is key to getting people to do business with you, absolutely. Having a website and a blog and putting content out there across lots of social media platforms and getting people to your website is how you actually build the information thanks wendy wendy's had to duck off but she'll get a copy of the recording so the activity on your facebook pages you know yes the goal is to get them to your website it's about getting the traffic to your website however you're sharing it the more people that go to your website the higher google will rank it based on the trust factor on the information factor and those that say that social media doesn't help with your Google ranking, they just don't understand how it all works. You know, if you Google your business today and you have a Facebook page, Facebook comes up on number one. So does LinkedIn. So I always say with my, my customers, we're looking for five points. So we're looking for when somebody Googles your business, we're looking for five points. So we're looking for a website, we're looking for a Facebook page, you know, maybe a LinkedIn profile. I want to know that you're a reputable business. So we're looking for those five points of contact to actually prove that to us also. The next one I'm going to talk to you about is building your email list. And again, we touched on this a little bit earlier with a previous slide, you know, we're sending information out um, to our email lists. But your email list can be a really great source of traffic to your website for a number of reasons. So you could be sending out information on, how to cure your customers' fears, uncertainties, and doubts. So people don't buy from you if they have fears, uncertainties, and doubts. So the best thing that you can do when you don't get business from somebody is to ask them why. 
you know, um, you know, somebody says, oh, at this point in time, I'm just not in a financial position to be able to purchase that. And you were to say, well, what if I had another option for you? You know, that's a fear and uncertainty for the person. They don't know about the return value that they're going to get from purchasing that product. Well, what if I can give you this for a smaller amount of money and you can give it a try and see how it goes? Number one mistake I see businesses make is not asking the question, do you mind if I ask why you decided to not go ahead with us? Um, and a lot of the time, you know, when it comes to our services, people will say, I found somebody who did it cheaper. And then I go through, oh, okay, so I, you, you just want to clarify with you, you found somebody who would do this, 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 and this for cheaper than what we are doing it. And if they say, yes, that's the case, then that's not the customer for me because we have our own worth, don't we? So, but sometimes we go, so they're doing this, 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 and this, and they go, oh, no, actually, they're only going to do this and this. Oh, certainly. Well, if that's all you want done, we can do it for you at a cheaper price also. If we were to do it for this much, would that interest you? Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, we might be interested. But if we had never asked the question in the first place, then we never know. So by sending an email out for lots of different things, it encourages people to go to your website on a regular basis. So your website becomes a trusted source of information for them. Now, your email could be advertising an event that maybe you're running, depending on what type of business that you're in. Or it could be the place where they have to go to purchase a ticket for an event. So you could be sending out an email saying, hey, guys, you know, here's all the events that we've got coming up this month, if you're interested. Yes, it could be a blog article that you're, you know, you've written. Here's some information, head to our blog article. It could also be a new service that maybe you've introduced. So information on a new product or a new service offering, you know, the aim is to always get them back to your website where they can find the information or get some traffic there. Because every time you get traffic to your website, it's helping with your Google search. So your emails don't just have to be about one particular thing. You know, you can say, here's the events that we're running or, you know, a lot of people send out a newsletter. If I'm honest with you, I think newsletters are a little bit done. We stopped doing newsletters. We were doing a monthly newsletter. The open rate on newsletters was terrible. Um, people want smaller, shorter pieces of information more often rather than here's what we've been doing this month and here's what's coming up. So we now send an email out about, you know, here, here are the events that are coming up for this month. So they've got, they get an events one. And if we introduce a new service, here's a new service that we're introducing. And then our blogs, of course, obviously. The next thing I'm going to touch on is backlinks. This all helps with your website traffic. You may not have heard of backlinks before, so let me explain it a little bit. But this is where another website links to your website through one of their articles. So let's say, for example, that you were writing an article and maybe you mentioned Facebook pages. You've done a bit of research while you've been um, on the internet. And you've decided that you want a reference link. So let's say, I'm just going to pull an example. I'm going to say you're, you're referring to our websites. Um, you're going to refer to our website. So you would say something like this, you know, Kerry Saverin from Altitude Business Solutions believes that businesses without a Facebook page aren't serious about marketing on social media. Now, what you would do is you would hyperlink that comment and you would link that comment to the blog post where you got the information from. So I may have written a blog post on the reason why Facebook pages are a necessity for small businesses. And in that, I may have made this quote, I may have said this quote, which was, I believe that businesses without a Facebook page aren't serious about marketing on social media. And so you've linked to that. Now, that hyperlink is known as a backlink. That means somebody's linking back to your website or to an article. So it's another way that people get to your, um, get to your website. And again, Google sees this. It sees that there's a backlink there and it gives them confidence that you're a reputable website, that you're giving out information that people want to know about and you're seen as a trusted source. 
Uh, yes, I did stop newsletters. I can see the comment there. And yes, I use MailChimp for my emails. A lot of people don't like MailChimp, but we love it. Um, we, we, the thought of changing actually overwhelms me so that I don't think we would do. Another way that you can get backlinks to your website is to offer to be a guest blogger. Now imagine this, you know, you're stressed out, you're sitting at your desk and you're like, oh my God, I haven't written this month's blog or I don't know what to write about. And somebody contacts you and says, hi, I noticed that we're in a, a similar industry, but we work in different niches. I was wondering if you'd be interested in me writing a guest blog on your website. And you would go, oh my God, that's great. I'm giving information to my clients and I don't have to write the articles. And you might come back and you might say, that would be fantastic if you can write me a blog post with three points in it about, you know, whatever it is that you want to write about, then they've created the content for you. It's still going to lead your clients and your customers back to your own website, but you're creating your own backlink. So you would write a article for somebody else's website. Obviously, there needs to be an exchange of conversation about well, as I'm writing this article, I would like to be able to link back to my own website. Are you happy with that? Most people will have no problems with that. I've had a couple of guest um, bloggers on my website. I have removed them. So if you go searching our blogs, you probably won't find them. The only reason I removed them is because those people, one of them had sold their business. So they were no longer with the business. Um, and the other one was no longer in that industry. They'd changed industries altogether. But guest blogging can be a really great way to offer a guest blog on somebody else's website. It gets you a backlink to your website simply by saying, if you'd like to know more about what Kerry Severin at Altitude Business Solutions does, click here. Bang, gets them to the website. You know, writing that article and putting a couple of backlinks into a couple of your blogs gets you another couple of backlinks. Now, not only is it important who links to your website, but it's also important who you link to. So a backlink on your website to somebody else's website can be really important also. And I'll give you a quick example. Let's say that you were a stationary shop. And I know, guys, my examples are always all over the place, but I guess I try and not just stick to, to one thing. I like to show you that it, this can work across multiple different fields. So you're a stationary shop this time and you wrote an article on the importance of placing your end of year financial stationary order. You know how businesses go, oh, we've only got a little bit of money left over there in stationary. You know, well, let's get it in before the end of the financial year. You know, you can claim the tax back after that and you've got your stocks here. So in this article, uh, you might say it's important to have all of your stationary order in before the end of the financial year. Um, you know, so that you're spending all of your budget, blah, blah, blah. So you might also say in there, for more information on submitting your end of year tax returns, you can head to the ATO website. I can tell you the ATO website would have an extremely high trust reputable link as far as Google is concerned. And when it sees that your website is linking to that website, it is going, hey, this is a real trusted source of information. This person knows what they're talking about. This website knows that these people are trusted. So it helps with your ranking. There's little, little tricks and tools that people don't know what's going on in the background when it comes to Google. Another really good website that you can link to also, we use this all the time with our clients. So when we are preparing a proposal for our clients, then we always link through to things like the census. So if we're dealing with a client, I'll give you an example, we're dealing with a client over in Perth at the moment. We're in Queensland. We don't know anything about the demographic in Perth. So we had to do some research for this particular client. So we find census is a great source of information. It will tell us how many people are in particular suburbs, et cetera. So it helps us give an idea of the, the type of reach that client can get. So we can refer to the census if we can say, you know, as per the 2016 census, here's what we found. 
um, we found these pieces of information, but we link to the census website. So if people want clarification on that, they link to it. Now you think about reading a blog article. I'm going to throw something out there to you right now. 67% of statistics are made up. Would you believe that? You'd be like, well, where'd you get that information from? I'm an information person. So if you say 67% of people um, don't, what did I say? Six, I lost, lost my thought track there. <laughs> it's got sent a couple of messages. Thanks so much for, um, for letting me know you're leaving, guys. All good. Um, so your 67% of people, the statistics are not right. You know, I want to know where that statistic comes from. So if you can link to me the exact source of that information, that's going to give me confidence that you're an expert in your field, that you're not just pulling figures from out of your head. So yes, I don't think the ATO needs any help in getting people to their website. Absolutely not. But what it does do, Susan, is it tells Google that you know what you're talking about because you deal with reputable websites. You're linking to reputable websites. So it really does help with your, um, your reach and your, how your ranking is on Google as well. So um, we do live in a world of fake news. Absolutely, Chris, we do. So linking back to reputable sources is really smart for what you do. So the magic number to focus on with these strategies per week, per day, look, that's probably a, a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation um, because it depends on what your business is and what your marketing plan is like. So these are just ideas, as I said, pull one out and um, do it. Um, don't tell me, show me. This is exactly what Google believes. Don't tell me, show me. It's so easy to be able to say, I'm an expert in my field and I know that 67% of people don't do this, but show me where that information came from. Don't tell me, show me. You know, how can you show Google that you are reputable, that you know what you're talking about? I'm going to skip through these last two very quickly, guys, because um, I know that we're probably going to be about four or five minutes over time and I do apologise for that. But number eight, collaborate with other content creators. This is a really smart idea and something that we haven't done, but something that we will do. Now you see, we do research. Um, so one of the research um, articles that we found is about this exact concept. And we were like, wow, this is great. We're gonna have to do this. Every time I run these, I try and do a little bit more research. If, it, if you've attended this webinar before, uh, maybe three months ago uh, was the last time we ran it. It is completely different today based on our research. Now, um, as I said, this one we should probably do ourselves, but what if you were to surround yourself with five other like-minded business owners who are not in competition with your business, but are complementary to your business and that you all would agree that you would write one blog a month on your site and you would be a guest on somebody else's site once a month. So from here, what you would do is you could possibly set up a group chat where you said, hey, guys, I've just written a, a new blog. Um, here's the link. And all the other five people, all the other, you've got six people together in the group. The other five people would go to that blog. They would read it. They would write a comment on the bottom of it. So straight away, you're going to have five blogs on there. And then you would have the opportunity to then write a guest post on five other websites. So not only would this give you accountability because you need a little bit of accountability when it comes to um, writing your blogs, but it would give you also give you a guest blog on another website that you would be able to link to. It would really create some momentum for you. I'm going to give you another example. In this example, you're a sign writer. You, spe you specialise, your niche is shop front signage. So you just do the signs that go up on the front of someone's shop. You know, this is a form of advertising. It's a form of marketing. So you could surround yourself with someone who does, for example, maybe car wraps or somebody who does billboards or somebody that does social media and maybe somebody who's a PR expert. So all of those people are in advertising they're not in competition with you. They're complementary to you. You're a sign writer. They're complementary. These people could become your referrers, you know, where they go, you know, somebody comes to you, for, you know, for a billboard 
and you go, okay, that's great. We can put this $10,000 billboard up. How's your shop frontage? What does your sign look like at the front of your shop? Does it need to be repaired? Do you need a new one? Because I have a really great person that I can refer you to. So that's how you create referral partners. So all these different niches, while they're all in marketing, they're all different niches. So they're all complementary to each other. The sign writer doesn't do car wraps. You know, but a lot of businesses today, when they get their new signage for their shop, they want their car wrapped as well. And doesn't it make the sign writer a real expert in his or her field when they can say, you know, okay, we can take care of your shop signage for you, but have you thought about a car wrap? Can we put you in contact with somebody? So you become this kind of expert in that field. So when you're collaborating with other content creators, do you mean mainly we are commenting for each other in the comments part? That's correct. So you write a blog, you put it up, I would say have a group chat, um, whether that is on Facebook or just on your phone, whatever that, is, and say, guys, I've put, another, I've put another blog up. If you don't mind going and reading on it and commenting, that'd be great. And everyone agrees that that's what they're gonna do. Once a month, they're gonna go to that blog, they're gonna read it and they're gonna put a comment at the bottom. That is gonna help you with your Google search. You can get this little collaboration happening. It gets you that accountability, it gets you those comments, it's helping out with getting people to your website. Collaborating with other businesses is really key um, for me. I do a lot of it uh, in the marketing space, a lot of it, because um, there are so many different things. So you just need to think outside the box a little bit. Last two points we'll get through very quickly. Number nine, SEO optimization for your website. You've all heard of search engine optimization, but what does it mean when it comes to your websites? I, I like this image because it shows you some of the key elements. We've already spoken about backlinks, you know, getting traffic to your page, yes. Um, having a ranking and your site architecture. So we spoke in the very beginning about site architecture. And that is where we said, you know, the bulk of the information really needs to be on that home page now because many people are on websites. You know, but originally you had your home page, had a little bit of information on it, and then you had multiple pages going off it. So, um, you know, having content on there that people can, can actually read by having your blog posts, your on-page and off-page optimization. Now, when we talk about off-page optimization, we're talking about in the back end of your website, there is page names. So obviously page names are important, but there's also page descriptions and there's also meta words. Now, again, uh, we run another, um, another webinar on winning the SEO game, which talks about SEO optimization and touches on these things, but having your, um, your page title, your page description and your meta words in there is all very important as well um, in getting people to your website. You know, making sure your website is full of what's called keywords, but not over the top um, is important so that you can come up in those search results. So you need to think about what your keywords would be for your business. What would people be searching for? What are the key words that they would be searching for? And that's why it's great to write blog articles. So, you know, blog articles could be, you know, how do you iron a shirt properly? You know, what is it that you search when you're on the internet? Thanks for your input today, Chris. Really appreciate it. So SEO can be really complicated, but the fact is it's part of your website success. As I said, we run another webinar called winning the SEO game that you should consider it's free as well consider attending because it goes into a lot more detail in the depth of SEO but this does help out with getting traffic to your website image optimization I'm going to touch on and explain very briefly I'm tired of seeing images on website that come up with image 56791 what this means is the description of the file name of the photo that's been loaded onto the website has not been optimized. Before you load any image to your website, you need to change the file name. Now, I always suggest at a minimum, it needs to be the business name, the business location, and a bit of a description as to what that picture is. So for example, um, for our business, it might be Altitude Business Solution, and then I might do a little underscore, underscore Brisbane, underscore social media. Because when somebody searches Altitude Business Solutions, guess what picture is going to come up? And when they click on that picture, 
guess where it's going to lead them. This is really key because many people miss this little trick. So some people are very visual. They're not readers. So when they do their search for how do you iron a business shirt properly, then they're going to go to the images tab instead of going to the news tab or to the articles tab, they're going to go to the images tab and see what images come up. And that's how they're going to end up on your website. So questions been asked, what if the business name is a little bit too long? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to answer that question because how long, I'm not sure how the business name, long name would be. I don't think it's a length um, to file names. You don't have a limit. So you should be able to put in there whatever you like. Um, so there shouldn't be a limit to it. Um, you know, if your business name is too long and it's not catchy enough, um, then that would be something that you might need to, to reconsider. But um, yeah, give me an example of the business name um, so I can guide you a little bit um, a little bit further. Don't you also have to actually describe the picture? Yes, you do. So we're getting to that. That's called Old Tech Susan. So that's the next one um, that's coming up. So please give an example of a file name here. So I just did, I just selected our one. So if I was doing uploading a picture relating to social media onto our website, the file name would be Altitude Business Solutions underscore Brisbane. So the business name, the location name, underscore social media. So if they search Altitude Business Solutions, Brisbane or social media, that image is going to come up. So that's why we do that way. Now, the other point that um, I want to touch on is image sites. We did touch on it very briefly earlier, but um, image size, a lot of people try to upload PNG files because they're really good quality. What I want you to remember is that 85% of people are now on your website on their mobile phone. So image quality isn't important because it's so small. If you can get away with uploading a JPEG, this is really going to help with the speed of your website. What that means is you can have a lot more content on your website that loads a lot faster because the website's not trying to load images. You know, we've all been to those websites where it nearly comes up line by line. It's like ching, ching, ching. Um, and that's website speed based on um, the image size. So if you can get away with loading a JPEG, then please do. And the last thing which was just mentioned earlier was alt text. So there's a thing called alternative text, um, which is used more frequently than you realize, especially now when we're moving into the world of voice, you know, hey, Google, tell me this. You know, hey, Alexa, tell me this. So there's an option for you to put in alternative text that describes the picture so that Google and Alexa know what it is that you're talking about. And it's really important for those who are visually impaired. So um, obviously they're using a lot of voice recognition now. So it's actually describing the picture as well. When it comes to the alter alternate text, I actually don't have a strategy. I think there's nothing worse. You think about it for a second. You're a visually impaired person and you know every single picture on a website is actually called Altitude Business Solutions underscore Brisbane underscore, and that's what's being read out. It would really annoy me. Um, so the alternate text I always put in is always the alternate text of what the picture is. So if it is a picture of somebody riding a bike, then it's a picture of somebody riding a bike. Um, I, don't, um, I don't have a strategy behind alt text just because um, I had a friend in, in primary school who was sight impaired. I often think about her when I think about all the technology and how far it's come and how, you know, she would have so much more to help her these days and what she did when we were at school. And, um, it, you know, I think about how annoying it would be for her um, using these, you know, voice, voice operated websites now that she can actually use and people not putting in the right information and trying to sell themselves. They'll be turned off straight away. So um, being um, open and honest with that. All images have alt text. Yes, they do, every image. You can even do alt text. Um, I'm not sure about Facebook, but I definitely know you can do it on Instagram. Um, alternative text um, can be done on Instagram also. We've done it. Oh, I like to put their little image in here like this because if I can get through 10 in an hour and I know I've gone over, but think of the uh, additional content that you're getting. So uh, supercharge your blogging in, it is coming up. Um, the winning SEO is definitely coming up. Supercharge your blogging. I believe it's maybe the end of May. 
Um, I don't have it in front of me right now. I'm thinking maybe the 27th of May is the next one that, that that's coming up. I know I'm really advanced in advance with my, my webinar, so it might not be till the end of May. Um, asbaz.com.au for all of that information. Um, so a lot of people ask after they come to these webinars, you know, where to now? Um, you know, you guys probably know the process, but I like to go through and explain it to you anyway. So you could have a one-on-one, -on -one, one-hour sessions with an expert. So if you decided that you wanted some more one-on-one -on -one help with your business, you can certainly book in a one-on-one -on -one consultation with us. That's not a problem whatsoever. Um, they're a maximum of $66. Sometimes they're free. So it really depends on um, what you uh, what you have to offer or what what your um, where you're at. Sorry, in the Asbaz um, purchasing, uh, but if you haven't booked a session with us before, it could be free um, with Asbaz before, or it could be forty four dollars or maximum sixty six dollars. So that's a really good way. We have a two hour workshops which are about twenty five dollars at the moment, so they're really good value as well. And then because we have these amazing free webinars, guys, you need to take advantage of these. I think this is just such a great idea. Um, that they've uh, decided to make these ones free. Um, our next webinar that's coming up is coming up tomorrow. I think you heard David talk about it a little bit earlier, but it was cust it's customer relationship management. So we are going to be talking all things CRM systems, all of that kind of stuff. So if you're already in business and you're looking for a customer relationship management system, then this is the one that you need to come to tomorrow. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know I've gone about eight minutes over today. I hope you did get a lot out of that. Uh, a lot of information in a very short amount of time, but don't forget you'll get a copy of the replay and uh, you'll be able to go back and visit it as well. So I'd like to wish you all a very fantastic day and I really hope to see you at another webinar very soon.